This week's Torah portion, or actually two portions, are the final two portions of the book of Shmos, the second book of the Torah. And as we've spoken on many occasions, the second book of the Torah can be summarized as the book of where. Where do we make this dwelling place for God that God desires and created the world for? We're to make the lowest world the most comfortable for God. A place where God can express himself the most, more than in heaven. But where, where on earth do we make this dwelling place for God? That's what the entire book is about. So first we're told the Jews were gathered at Mount Sinai and God came down. Okay, that tells you, you don't go to heaven to make a dwelling place for God. God comes down to earth. Then we're told to actually build a sanctuary a physical structure made out of physical materials in which God will make himself known. That will be the tent of meeting where God and humans can communicate. The rest of the, of the second book of the, of the Torah gives us all the details, the minute details of how exactly you build this sanctuary. In the, in the portion called Vayakel, the first of the two portions that we read this week, we're told that Moshe gathered the Jews to tell them about the mitzvah of building a sanctuary. Moshe had just come down off the mountain. He brought the second set of tablets. It was Yom Kippur. There was forgiveness for the people. And there was the instruction that they should build a mishkan, a tabernacle. Rashi comments on this gathering together of the people. Rashi says it was the day after Yom Kippur. When did this gathering happen? When did Moshe tell them about the mitzvah to make a mishkan? The day after Yom Kippur. You have to wonder why. And what is the significance of that? Wouldn't you expect that when Moshe comes down off the mountain and he has an instruction, a mitzvah, to tell the people how to build a mishkan, would he wait until tomorrow, till the day after Yom Kippur? Why wouldn't he tell them on the day that he comes off the mountain? Especially since the news was such good news. They were forgiven for making the golden calf. God wanted to actually dwell among them. Why would, why would that wait until tomorrow? The Rebbe explains this, and he says, when Moshe came off the mountain, what was on people's minds? What is it they wanted to hear? They wanted to hear that they were forgiven and that the tablets had been rewritten by God on the new stones and that there was more information more detail about the commandments than God gave with the first set. In other words, there was more to learn and there was the forgiveness, the tshuva. What Rashi is telling us, Moshe did not get into the instructions of building a mishkan on the day that he came down off the mountain because there was something else they had to be busy with, consumed by, and they were not ready to hear instructions for what they are supposed to do. First, they had to learn the new commandments, and they had to respond to the forgiveness, absorb it, 
appreciate it, celebrate it. And so Moshe gave them time. The day that he came down off the mountain, Yom Kippur, he gave them time for tshuva and for Torah. The next day, they were ready to put all that knowledge and all that feeling, tshuva is a feeling, Torah is the knowledge, they were ready to put all of that into action. So the day after Yom Kippur, Moshe tells them what they need to do to bring God down to earth. The moral of the story is that although the main objective of our generation is to get the job done and really bring God down to earth in the entire earth, not just in one building or one temple, not even only in one country or one city like Jerusalem, but that the whole world should become God's dwelling place. The whole world should be a place where God can be encountered, where God can be uh, communicated with, because God is comfortable with the entire world being his dwelling place. That's the main objective. That's what we need to do. But before we can do it, we need to learn. We need to know. We need to understand so that we can actually distinguish between what's godly and what is not, what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong, what's up and what's down. If we don't know, if we haven't learned, and we go off to perform a task, we're going we're gonna to mess it up. Without a blueprint, you can't build much. So the Torah is the blueprint. So first we have to learn, we have to know, then we can go to the action. But because the action is so urgent, we can't spend a long time on the learning. You can't wait until you become a scholar, which could take years. Moshe gave the people a day, not even a full day. He came down off the mountain and gave them the rest of the day to learn the new information and to celebrate the forgiveness and the tshuva. So yes, we have to know before we go off doing stuff, but the knowing should be brief, the learning, just enough to know what we need to do and then go off and do it. As the Rebbe often said, if you have learned the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, then go and teach the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And when you've learned the second letter, you'll teach the second letter. So, of course, you have to know something, but don't wait until you're a scholar. Once you have a little information that is precious and powerful and the rest of the world needs to know it, don't hesitate and don't wait. The next day, go off and share it and teach it. One very practical and profound lesson from the, this week's Torah portion. Then there's another very simple, profound, life-changing message. When Rashi, in his commentary, explains the word Vayakhel, which is translated as gathered, Moshe gathered the people, Rashi explains it by using another word for gathering, Asifa. They both mean gathering, so the Rebbe asks, why switch for another word? Why not stick to the word that the text used? Vayakhel. And the Rebbe's insight and, and attention to detail brings us another incredible teaching. What is the difference between these two words, Hebrew words, when they both mean gathering? Vayakhel means to gather, 
Asifa or Asifa means gathering. The word Asifa, which means a gathering, can and is often applied to objects. You gather the grain into the silo. You gather your stuff into a suitcase. And you gather people together. But the word Vayakhel can apply only to human beings. Because the word Vayakhel means to congregate. To become a congregation. So Vayakhel means more than just gathering, but gathering so that you become one solid being. You become a community, a congregation. A congregation is made up of many individuals, but those individuals become a new being. They become a community, one community made up of many parts. So Asifa does not become something. You gather the grain into the, into the silo, it's just grain. They don't become a community of grain. But when you gather people, they become something new, something greater than the sum of the individuals. Like in marriage, two people marry each other and they become one. <clears throat> they become a couple. One couple. Or like a duet. When you have two people singing together in harmony, it's two people, but they've turned into a duet. A single duet. Right? So, Vayakel means to become a community, to become a nation, to become a unified entity. So the Torah says, Vayakel Moshe. Who can turn many people into a single entity? Moshe. When the people were all committed to hearing what Moshe had to say, and he was the teacher of them all, they merged losing their individual separateness, they merged into a people, a congregation, a kahila. That was the effect Moshe had on them. Rashi says, you see, kahila can also mean asifa. What is he telling us? Even when you gather people together and they don't become a community and they don't become a single entity, they're just gathered together in one place for one purpose. So what do they have in common? The location and the intention. But they remain distinct individuals. Rashi is telling us that wouldn't happen either if it wasn't for motion. Even that degree of oneness, even that degree of humility, where we're willing to gather at the same place for the same purpose, which takes a lot of humility. The ability to get along, the ability to form a consensus is an act of humility. I mean, the very fact that we're considering many opinions and not every man for himself. So even if we're not going to become a single entity, but we are going to work towards a single goal, even that comes from a devotion to Moshe. Because if it weren't for Moshe, we wouldn't have a single goal. It would be every man for himself. Ish kol hayosher be'enov yaase. Chaos comes from each person doing what he thinks is right. Not people being bad. No, everyone doing what they think is best. And that's chaos. Because everyone thinks something else as best. If people can get together and agree that there is one purpose and there's one goal and there's one objective that is the best, 
That comes from a degree of humility. Not enough humility to merge them into a single entity. Like everybody marching to a single drum. All their hearts beating like one heart. Which happened at, at the foot of Mount Sinai. But even the lower degree of humility, which just allows people to cooperate, to be in the same place without conflict, and to agree on a purpose, on a goal, without exception. Even that degree of humility comes only through motion. If we don't have the inspiration from the leader, from the collective soul, our individual souls remain separate. So, these two lessons are derived just from the word Vayakhel, Moshe. Just the two words tell us all of this. And then, of course, there's the rest of the reading. So the Torah is not only full of wisdom, it's endless wisdom. Every word, every expression, you can write books about it, and it will never be exhausted. There will be deeper and deeper insights. The more we study, the more we look, the more we plumb the depths of the meaning, the more we find. And after 3,000 years of scholarly analysis and pursuit, we barely scratch the surface. That is the awesome pleasure of the study of Torah. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below, and see which, which of the three suits you best, and join us for some enjoyable conversation.